Okay, welcome back. Um, at this point, you guys have either watched the first video or watched the first few seconds of it and figured that everything I'm talking about, you were already an expert in, so you went ahead and did it yourself. Well, hopefully if you did it that way, you guys set it up right. Otherwise, I highly recommend you go back and check out that first video. But at this point, I've now opened up Virtual DJ as we've got everything set up on the Maya 44 USB and Mac OS X. Uh, again, this is version 6.0.1. Um, it should work the same for version 5.0. Two or whatever the, the last current uh, release version is. Uh, however, I was never able to get the Maya working properly on the old version with the latest generation MacBook. Uh, I believe that was due to an issue with the NVIDIA sound drivers. Anyways, now we're going to uh, go ahead and open up VDJ. I've got a custom skin here, but obviously the skin doesn't matter. I'm going to go into the config because that's where I'm really worried about things. So we've got a pretty stock here. Inputs is none. Single output. Sound card simple. Um, two things that we want to do once we start setting up time code actually we're going to go ahead and set up all three in one shot just to save ourselves a step is uh, in our inputs we're going to go ahead and go to time codes I'm running multiples so I'm choosing the bottom one if you're running a single obviously you just run the single time code um, left deck is one and two right deck is three and four I've already verified those plugins so we're okay you happen to plug it in backwards no problem you can hit the drop down and actually flip flop them so uh, again uh, not a big deal next step is on the outputs um, we're running an external mixer so I'm gonna go ahead and choose that uh, one thing to note make sure that your uh, output is the same as your input as far as your decks as you can see I've got uh, on the left deck channels one and two on the left deck channels one and two. If you wind up getting them crisscrossed or you only change one and forget to change the other, you're gonna wind up running your mixture and it's gonna work backwards. It's gonna be very confusing for you. All right, um, last step, go to our sound card. Obviously you're not running the built-in output. Uh, do not choose Maya 44 USB. You're gonna cause yourself needless headache, needless confusion. You're gonna wanna select the aggregate device. So uh, that's the aggregate device that I set up in my previous video. Again, if you haven't done that yet, please go to my other video. Please do that because you won't be able to go any further at this point. All right, once all that's done and put in place, make sure you hit apply so that the changes are committed. I'm a little paranoid, so I like to hit it a couple times. Um, but once we're ready to go, now we'll go into our time code configs. Now, if you're running the exact same unit on both sides, you can go ahead and configure it under the Both tab. I'm doing a hybrid setup. We've got vinyl on the left. We've got CDs on the right. So I'm going to set them up one at a time. I'm going to go ahead and start with the right deck. Uh, with the right deck, again, uh, Newmark CDX. I'm using the latest virtual DJ uh, version 5 CDs downloaded off the internet. If you're using an older version, the download is free. CDs are not that expensive. Please go buy yourself a couple of CDs, download the latest version because you're going to need it. Uh, older versions I don't believe are supported uh, and I'm not going to try it. Um, there's no reason we can't get the latest version and uh, do what we're trying to do here. Anyways, so what you want to do is go to vinyl, make sure that you've uh, selected Virtual DJ V5 CD, not vinyl code, but actual CD. Uh, and uh, I like to be in smart relative mode. Um, you can go to standard relative, which is always going to be relative mode, or absolute, which basically just makes it spin when the device is on. Smart relative is definitely the way to go as far as I'm concerned. Um, maybe I'll do a video later talking about the, uh, the significant differences there. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and turn this deck on. I'm going to turn the volume down here as well. <laughs> I happen to have some music on there. Anyways, as you can see, I got this on the first shot probably because I've done this before. Um, but this is the perfect time code signal. As you can see, I'm taking about a quarter of the space on each one of these boxes. I'm not using the entire screen. Uh, it, it would just be insane. You're going to cause yourself needless headache. A lot of guys that are having trouble, I find, are running their time codes way too strong. This is a perfect signal. I'm going to go ahead and shut that one down. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and uh, drop the needle on my vinyl over here. I'm going to go ahead and select left deck because now we're working on the left deck. 
Um, again, you can see I've done this before, so I've already got everything preset. But uh, make sure, as I said, we're running with the Serato vinyl. I'm using side A. Uh, you got to use version 2 in order for Smart Relative to work. Uh, I, I've tried Torque. Torque works as well. Um, again, the signal's a little wimpier, and in my opinion, the, uh, the vinyl is a little lower quality. That's just a personal thing for me. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and select Serato here. Um, you can see I've got my gain set up pretty high. On the right deck, you can see that the gain is almost set down to maybe a third. On the left deck, I'm almost maxed out. Um, that's just because vinyl has a much, much weaker signal than CDs do. Um, and this is a digital turntable, so uh, you can imagine what some of the older analog turntables are going to be like. Anyways, again, you can see each circle is only taken up about a quarter of the screen. Um, I can probably crank this up just a notch, but not much. Uh, and uh, there we go. Now uh, you'll see that the gray dot over here is pretty big. What that is is that is the silence. Um, silence basically, uh, and you probably can't see it because the video isn't uh, high definition of enough uh, enough for you guys. Of course, that's YouTube nature of the beast. But you get these little green dots popping up all over the place. And if you get a lot of them in the middle there, it's going to start messing with your time code signal. So what silence does is actually increases or decreases this gray dot. And that gray dot basically tells the software to ignore anything that falls within that circle. I like to set it and give myself just a little bit of a black gap around the green rings because if the uh, gray area touches any one of those rings you're just going to give yourself more headaches. So uh, that's the basic issue with the time code. Alright, so I'm going to give some uh, stuff here for us to troubleshoot with. So you can see we got a good uh, digital signal right there. I'm going to come over and I am actually going to pop off one of the RCAs. So you got that vertical flat line. If you guys are seeing something like this, that means you are not getting uh, one of your channels. In this case, it happens to be the left one. I'm going to go ahead and uh, plug that bad boy back in. As you can see, our signal gets good. Now, uh, if I pop over the uh, left one, you'll notice now we get a flat line there. So uh, again, if you're seeing a flat line, that means you're not seeing one of your signals. Another symptom I'll show you guys. So I'll go ahead and pop open the Maya. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn the ganging off. And I'm going to turn one of them way down. Now if we go back here, now you'll see we kind of get this. It was basically the shape of an eye. That means that your one signal uh, on the left is uh, got a stronger signal than the one on the right. Um, Again, that's why I tell you guys, and uh, this is pretty much universal for any type of sound card you're using. You want to make sure that things are ganged and that everything is right where you want it to be. So there we go. Um, I'm actually going to turn this up a little bit. So there's our signal there. I'm going to come back and double check and make sure everything's all right on my vinyl. Looks good there. So uh, there's some uh, uh, there's the rundown of how to set up your time code. So uh, once everything is done, we close it, we commit it, and we're ready to go. Quick trick: um, if you've already done this and you're opening VDJ for the second time or a third time or whatever, one quick way to make sure everything is on and working the way you want it to is go ahead and turn on your deck and uh, make sure things are spinning uh, on your skin. Again, I'm running a custom skin. But uh, still the same trick. If you turn it off, we see things are there. I turn it back on, maybe do a little scratch. Make sure it's going the way I want it to. There we go. Um, all right, at this point, uh, if you guys want to go to it, uh, you should be ready to go. And uh, 
scratch and mix and do everything to your heart's content with the software. If you guys are curious about what the signal's like, um, feel free to check out my next video. Um, that's the point where I'm actually going to go ahead and mix a few sets. So, uh, all right. Uh, practice, enjoy, and uh, hopefully you'll check out my next video.